Good morning, and uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, in my presentation today, I will address the question of data ownership from a legal perspective and highlight some of the difficulties we have uh, in applying the legal concept of uh, ownership to data. And this is the outline of my presentation. I will start with an introduction looking at why data ownership is an emerging issue uh, in relation to data collection and use. Then I will explain what, um, what ownership means from a legal uh, point of view. And I will then uh, explore uh, the application of the legal concept of ownership to data and what kind of challenges um, that arise from that. Uh, there's currently a law reform project in England and Wales concerning digital assets, and there have been a lot of uh, interesting discussions uh, in the concept, in the scope of that law reform project in relation to information data and uh, the, the concept of ownership in that, uh, in that context, and I will uh, try to draw upon these discussions um, in my presentation as well. And, I will conclude uh, by looking at uh, what might be the way forward uh, for data ownership. So um, data has a uh, crucial importance in environmental sustainability. The United Nations uh, considers data as key uh, in the progress of achieving sustainable development goals by uh, 2030, because data can guide uh, efforts uh, in identifying where the needs are and help users to develop solutions and uh, take timely actions. And in order to tackle environmental challenges, the UN recommends that uh, we need well developed um, tools in place to ensure uh, um, data, uh, data gathering in the first place and increase the amount and quality of data. And uh, we are in a position uh, to do that due to the technological uh, progress and vast volumes of uh, data can, can be generated uh, today by sensors, by the use of AI, digital humans, and so on. And this brings up um, the question of rights and duties in relation to uh, data collection, including its usage and uh, sharing, data sharing, and in a way, uh, we think that if we can identify the, um, the owner of data in a given case, these questions might seem uh, to be easier to answer for us because recognition of um, data ownership could also provide legal title and proprietary rights over data. However, uh, when we speak of data ownership may not be a straightforward concept uh, or a suitable legal concept to use. Um, perhaps it might be uh, a useful thing to illustrate that uh, by an example from the US uh, concerning farmers and agriculture technology providers, which I came across in an OECD publication uh, when we were doing the horizon scanning in, in the network. So accessing and using agricultural data has become very important for farmers' success and some of the big uh, agriculture technology providers saw a big potential in this and they started to integrate sensors with their equipment and they were able to uh, generate a large volume of uh, data by doing that. And this data had economic value as well um, since it was an important source for certain companies dealing biotech, crop insurance, and as well as traders as well. And um, the agricultural data was controlled by uh, agriculture technology providers, and this raised concerns uh, in relation to potential harms to farmers, including financial exploitation. So various uh, discussions took place uh, in the US, uh, including the question of who owns agricultural data. And uh, if the farmers, if that's the farmer's data, so they should be able to use it, they should be able to have uh, control over it, and uh, when data is used uh, by others for financial gain, farmers should be able to gain um, benefit from that as well. And these discussions in the US eventually led up to um, uh, drawing up some principles uh, in relation to farm data in the US. 
So uh, one might think that recognition of data, recognition of uh, ownership over data is important, but from a legal perspective, it's not as straight uh, forward as we think. So property and ownership are um, defined and understood, categorized very differently among the different jurisdictions. So this is an area of law, property law, differs significantly among jurisdictions. So um, ownership means the exclusive right to use, process and dispose of property. And property is defined as anything um, that can be owned. And in terms of uh, categories of uh, property, um, English law has real property, which is uh, basically land and personal property, um, any, any other thing than that. So there is also a further dis uh, division um, in English law between things in possession. So these are the things uh, with physical existence, uh, they can be uh, they can be processed, such as a car and on things in action, and these are legal rights or uh, claims enforceable by actions such as that. And and that's it. That's the two categories we have uh, under English law. And law recognizes ownership over these assets and provides legal regimes uh, for sharing benefits uh, of uh, of them through different forms. So I can rent my car to you, uh, while doing that I can keep uh, the ownership, legal ownership of my car, uh, while we are in the possession of my car. And I can assign that to a third party, which is a different, different uh, form of sharing. And uh, I will come back to that, there is uh, a law reform uh, in relation to digital things. So uh, where does um, data sit in this categorization. Uh, in many jurisdictions, notion of data ownership um, does not exist in law. So in legal terms, we don't have such notion. Um, instead of data ownership, law concerns with rights and duties that arise in relation to data. And there are different reasons why this is the case. So information as a thing, do not attract proper rights under English law and in many other jurisdictions as well, because it is not rivalrous. So what does that mean? Um, if I give you my book, you have my book and I don't have it anymore. If I give you a piece of information, you have that information and I have it as well. So we both have that information. So in legal terms, um, information that's not something that can be owned. Uh, when information is structured, uh, for example, through an electronic database, in turn, information may give rise to uh, IP rights, or when information is recorded on a piece of device, um, then you might have property rights over that device, but not the information itself. And there's already a legal frameworks in place um, to protect information via law of confidentiality, IP, data protection, and so on. And the situation is similar uh, with data as well. So the law does not grant a special status to data. And the idea of owning data is very different than uh, owning other things. Another difficulty um, we have um, in relation to the idea of uh, conferring ownership, legal ownership to data is that there are multiple people involved in data cycle at, at some stage. So they take on different roles uh, in this data, data cycle in generating data or creating it, using it, complying it, um, selecting it, structuring and so on. Because of the special or because of the role they take on uh, in this process, they may each claim um, data ownership, legal ownership. So data cycle is based on uh, in interaction involving or uh, between multiple people. And it might not be always easy to de determine who should be the owner of data in question, who, who 
who has the greatest threat to it. Um, I would like to mention very briefly about the uh, recent war reform project from England and Wales on digital assets. So this uh, this is this has been conducted by the Law Commission of England and Wales and very recently completed. Um, so uh, the Commission published uh, published their recommendations uh, two weeks ago to the government uh, on reforming English law on points. And the motive uh, behind this project was actual digital assets, uh, uh, actual crypto, has, uh, crypto assets like Bitcoin. But the scope of the project got bigger and they concerned uh, as a number of um, different types of digital assets, digital files, digital records, email accounts, um, domain names, carbon emission trading schemes, as well as uh, crypto assets. And uh, the Commission said that some digital assets are neither things in possession uh, and not, or nor things in action. So they don't fit in the traditional categories of uh, properties and they recommended legislation confirming that they should be still uh, able to be subject to property rights. Um, under certain conditions. Um, and the reason I wanted to mention that is that uh, actually it shows us how how law is how much law is challenged by the technology and these are the concepts that law have for centuries and now they all need to change uh, to, to respond to the questions of digitalization. Um, so what did we know so far about data ownership? From a legal perspective, uh, the concept of ownership is not easily applied to data. Uh, there are also arguments that no one should own data and data should be uh, kept open instead of being uh, subject to property rights. Then uh, what the question becomes is that, uh, is ownership actually a useful concept for, for data? Uh, legal frameworks in place are already very complex, not necessarily easy to understand or implement in this area. We get more and more regulation, legislation to respond to digitalization. So would it be a useful thing to, to add another piece of uh, legal, legal framework, bring in a concept which may not be useful to bring in to this already complex picture? So if we are trying to achieve here uh, is, you know, if it is providing a better protection to data or privacy, better privacy and so on, could this be achieved by alternative ways than comparing ownership um, to data, to someone over data? For example, placing more focus on the concept of control rather than ownership or or data rights. And if we move away from the discussion of ownership, this may also open up more possibilities for alternative data sharing models like data trusts. Uh, of course, I, I have talked about law, but there are ethical considerations as well. I think uh, Ron mentioned it uh, yesterday in his opening speech, such as the rights of indigenous people in relation to data about their communities, people's uh, land and resources. And um, as a last, last sentence, um, I would like to say that these are very new discussions uh, and questions for law. So if we consider the GDPR, it entered into force in only a few years ago. And uh, so we are very much at the start of a uh, conversation rather than the end. Thanks very much for listening to me. Time for a uh, few questions. So okay. I've got one. So that that aspect of confirming that about data before the whole sentence is that actually going to make a difference to anything in the immediate future? That uh, confirmation that data is a sort of third type of. Yes, I think that's it. That's important. Uh, I mean, they obviously have the motive to give recognition to uh, you know uh, crypto assets in English law. But I think uh, we, we should see how, how things will develop in that. But I think it's a very big, substantial reform to recognize digital things or digital objects as a third category in the world. Yeah. And then uh, Steve was asked about um, for, for kind of AI derived data mm -hmm. from, from a body of pre existing training data. How does that, uh, how does that kind of complicate ownership of the derived data? 
Yeah, I think that's uh, that's another question we have in relation to how the AI generated data, uh, all the all sorts of questions related to AI generating the web. If it is, it can be on Google on it or the right and UTS it creates. And there is a current uh, consultation in the UK in relation to AI regulation. So I guess there will be more regulation on that aspect as well. And then Richard asks about. Um, mm -hmm. Well, quite often, as institutes, we talk about owning data as institute. Is that just not legally, a bad term? Does no, we, legally, we talk about controlling that data or yeah, is it just a license? Is it yeah, a license? Rights, the rights you have over data, but in legal terms, it's not ownership from legal sense. But as yet. Interesting. Okay, well, thanks, okay, thanks very, very much. much.